Hey, you're watching Game Changer. I think I'll sit up. My name is Kurt Pickering. I'm co-host. I'm the basketball coach. My co-host is the life coach, Michelle Harris. Hi. Today we're going to talk about raising kids. Well, that's, that's A to Z. There's yeah. a lot you can talk about. Sure. You have two kids. Yes. What, what's life been like for you? You know, I, I have a high schooler who's going to be a sophomore, she's 15, and I have a 10-year-old. So I've got a broad spectrum. And raising kids today in the way the world and the culture and society is, there's so many amazing things that have been to our advantage, I think, for me as raising and being a single mom. But also, there's some really tough things that's been hard as well. Well, look at what we see in the media. Right. And what the kids experience social media wise sure you know I mean it's wow it's a frenzy yeah. even in the basketball coach here with yeah. the NBA it's a 12 month sport now it used to be maybe a nine month sport and you took three months off right and there was just no no news yeah. it was just kind of a dull period everybody go on vacation because of social media it's 12 months but Look at the pressure kids are under, sure. you know, uh, what they face. Do yeah. you, you have any experiences with that with your I, kids? I have. I, you know, my daughter, we went through a season where she had a really rough time with being bullied. So it was a really hard um, experience for all of us in the family, but especially for her, you know, when kids, um, they bully right through social media. They can say things. They even have, um, there's accounts they can go on anonymous. And it's a painful uh, situation when your child's being bullied. But, you know, Kurt, we've just, um, I have really impressed on my kids how we overcome these things and try to educate myself on how do we rise above when this is happening because suicide rate is high Ooh. among teenagers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You've got the school shootings. And these kids today with social media, they're actually getting their self-esteem and confidence from the likes on their Instagram accounts. So I've really, with my daughter, tried to show her where your value and ca character come from instead of it just being everything superficial, which is everywhere today. I don't know the protocol with high schools in, in regard to the principals, the teachers, coaches, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it probably puts them in a real precarious position because when they hear things, do you take it serious or not? Mm -hmm. And I think you have to take almost everything serious anymore today with the shootings that are going right. on. And there's probably a lot of incidents we don't even hear about. Locally, we've had, uh, you know, this past season of, or past school year, uh, San Marcos High. Right. You, you have friends that attend there, right? I absolutely, absolutely, I absolutely do. And one of my very best friend's daughter was one of those... Um, friends that was listed on that list so she's very scared how was that for for her mom scary when you see your daughter on a list um, where they're threatening to get rid of or dispose of this list of girls um, I think moms get beside themselves wondering what's the right thing to do they don't want to overreact especially my friend she didn't want to overreact but she also you're concerned about your child's life yeah you got to be proactive mm -hmm. and and, and really not wait for something to happen. You, you really have to be so alert right. to um, what, what, what's, what you're hearing out there. Sure. You know, I spent some time with her, too. Um, it's one of my daughter's very best friends. And she was sharing with me, it's just caused a lot of anxiety for her to continue to go to school. I mean, she goes and, and um, she pushed through the end of the school year with the support of her parents helping her. But it's a tough thing as a teenager at any age, wondering now you go to school and you're looking over your shoulder, you're already planning your escape, you don't know who's gonna, on campus gonna start shooting. These kids are living in some anxiety. And then, you know, we have many that, uh, many homes are, are uh, split, mm -hmm. you know, divorced. So it's so important that those parents can still be civil to each other yes. for the sake of their kids. Right. You know, 
You know, I can really relate to that, Kurt, because I'm divorced, and I really am intentional about, um, you know, divorce is tough. It's tough on anybody, but it comes down to forgiveness. You know, people go through adversity and hard times, but I have found with my children that if their father and I get along, we might not agree on everything, but we forgive each other. It's what our kids are watching. So I've told my kids, look, at, we may be divorced, but we're still family. We have remodeled what that looks like, but if they can sense no tension between their dad and I, they thrive and you can overcome any adversity, you know, and what's happening today is we've got parents that aren't getting along and they're not rising above and they're not forgiving, so then the children are really suffering. I'm not saying that my kids don't suffer because any child suffers in a divorce, but how do you show them that adversity can be overcome? And those are tools that even as parents we need um, so that we can create the best life for ourselves and overcome, and that's what creates a great life for our children when we can get rid of um, unforgiveness. Well, it's tough for kids. Mm -hmm. you know, if they, if uh, Let's just say one scenario would be they grew up and the family was close together mm -hmm. and then something happens and uh, all of a sudden things are not the same in the home, all of a sudden, you know, it's either there's a lot of arguing mm -hmm. or it's non-confrontational, but there's that dead silence. Sure. Kids are not, they're not uh, f fools. You know, they, they sense when things are not right. Then right. when one of the parents leaves, moves out, uh, yeah, it's got to be devastating for yeah. kids. Yeah. And, it rips them apart. That's why it's so important as adults, as the parents, to be very intentional about the help that you get on how to walk through a divorce with your children. Uh, sometimes parents are so angry and hurt in their own life being torn apart, they forget that there's other people involved. So it's important. And that ripple effect of that, it, it, it affects you as um, an individual too. So I encourage parents that, hey, you know, it's not only to help your children, but if you help yourself, you're going to be able to get on with your life and know that life isn't over because of a divorce. That you can resurrect and create the life that you've always dreamed of, but you need to, you need to have the proper tools to do that. So that this doesn't just overflow and keep you stuck in your life and, and these poor children that are ripped apart, letting this define them. It's teaching these kids it doesn't have to define them. They can still live their dream, be intentional and, and accomplish what their purpose is. Yeah. I, I think what's important too is uh, as a parent mm -hmm. teaching our kids uh, the, the, the friends they choose to be around mm -hmm. with. You know, you can choose to be around uh, your peers that um, want to live a quality life, mm -hmm. you know, on a daily basis, or you can choose ones that are angry, unhappy vindictive yeah. and uh, very distracted sure. from, from, you know, school and then socially. Right. Well, it just reminds me of that saying, bad company corrupts good character. And that's teaching our kids that that is true, right? And having the balance in that. But what you just listed off also, as parents, we need to make sure that we're not, you know, modeling that kind of behavior even through a divorce. They pick up on it and guess the choices they make. They're watching their parents. They watch what we do. They don't um, always listen to what we say, but they watch what we're modeling. So if we're choosing right circles of peers and colleagues, we're hopeful that our children are going to decide to choose the same thing. We're all kind of called to action, but sometimes we're just looking at the kids. But It's a really good time to take inventory even as an adult and parent in our own life so that we can model that for the kids. But sure, I mean, even with my daughter, She's got some amazing friends now, but she had some really rough friends too. And then when she was getting bullied, her self-esteem was so low and she was really in that victim state. But when, when I watched her shift out of that and realized that that just wasn't, um, it wasn't about her. Well, and what's also gonna be interesting, uh, state of California has made marijuana legal. Mm -hmm. So, how do you teach your kids right or wrong? Mm -hmm. and, and let's face it, many, and, and it, it, this doesn't even have to be a controversial sure. topic. Right. 
Uh, we know many people use yeah. uh, this medicinally, and mm -hmm. it does help them. Right. Then you have people that that uh, use it recreationally. Mm -hmm. You have some that are that it's addictive for them. You right. know, they can't live without it. Yeah. So I, I'm not here to make a moral stand on it. Right. But the state of California, it, it, it it's going to kind of up the ante for parenting on. You know, are you going to allow your kid to uh, smoke it in mm -hmm. the open, you know, in publicly? Right. Uh, are you going to be opposed to it? Mm -hmm. And there again, you know, talking about peer pressure. Sure. And such, uh, it's going to it's going to make things. I think it's really going to call on parents to uh, whichever way they believe. You can put your head in the sand, or you can really deal with. Uh, with these issues. Sure. And that just goes back to you knowing what you're, um, what you're firm on and what you believe in your own home. You know, so what's happened in society too is we've gotten desensitized and we're letting society raise our children. So for me and for my house, we know what our rules are and how I'm raising my children, which I have no judgment. If people want to do what they're going to do, they're going to do. But I know what I stand firm and how I'm raising my children. And I think that's important as parents. We're falling, you know, we don't want our kids to fall into social media or follow into society or what they're saying if it's not what their belief systems are. It's strong as a parent, too. I am, you know, forthright and intentional about what our values are in our home. So how do you effectively communicate with your kids if their peers are saying it's okay, let's, let's go with marijuana? Sure. That, that they're doing it and they say it's okay, mm -hmm. and, and I'm talking about their peers, and then your son or daughter, uh, they're, they're facing that same issue. Mm -hmm. How do you effectively, and a lot of this comes down to what your own personal sure. uh, opinion is on it, but mm -hmm. how, how do you communicate effectively mm -hmm. to get this across to your kids. Mm -hmm. Well, with my teenager, I just ask her a lot of questions. I just ask a lot of questions, and she tells me which friends are doing all of that. Um, you know, in educating them, I have her read it herself. There's a lot of things out there that say things are okay, and there's parts of those things that are okay, but there's a lot of data out there that says they're not. So a lot of times, I'll tell her what my belief system and what are the rules are in our home. But at the same time, I want her to come up with her own convictions. Mm -hmm. We have ours, and I want her to respect them. But she, I have put it back, on, her, and she'll come to me, and she'll make her own conviction. And so far, it's worked for, for my house, or home, I should say. So I talked to her about all of it, the pros and the cons. And when you have many friends, are you just going to do what they do, even if you disagree with it? And, let, and you know, I really try to get her to come... You know, I'm the parent, and I ultimately have the say what goes on in our home. But at the same time, I really instill in her that she can empower, be empowered to create the life she wants, even at 15 and a half, to make big decisions because life's about choices. And when she comes up with her own answers, it's so much more, it's, it's sustainable, but I still have my rules, and she still has to obey them. But at the same time, when she comes up with it, it's sustainable. So we have this great open relationship where we can talk about it. She's curious. I'm very open. We talk about everything, and I, I always want it to be like that. I come from, when I was raised, I have amazing parents, but communication, things weren't talked about. In my generation, it was just sweep, swept under the rug. Yeah. You know, my household, we're talking about everything. <laughs> Round table at the Harris house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> table talk, just like we're doing, right? Just, just real lives, real issues, but what are we going to follow? And you have to have something you stand for or you fall for everything. So I instill in my kids, this is what we stand for. And if they're, not, if they, if they're opposed to it, then they get an opinion and they get to voice it. And we discuss why. So, yeah. Let's talk about sports. Okay. Um, your kids are both involved in sports. Yes. What are the positives to, to being a, a participant? And secondly, what if they're having a bad experience? Do we just let them quit? Mm, that's really good, Kurt. So I, uh, you know, my daughter plays sports, and it, it's been amazing. It's, what does she play? She plays volleyball. Okay. And she's uh, kind of came out of nowhere with it, which is so wonderful. It really has been a confidence booster for her. 
and exercise is so great for all of us, but boy, in adolescence, they need to burn up that energy, oh, yeah. you know? So it's been a great uh, positive thing for her, but she's had some hard times too. You know, when things don't go your way and she, you get injured, uh, there's a lot of times I want to give up, I want to quit. Uh, something else in our home is when you start something, you finish it. Yeah. We're gonna do. We're gonna do hard things well. We're not gonna just do things well when we're on our mountaintop and things are going our way, right? We're gonna do hard things well. So when we're when we're feeling like we want to give up and we want to quit because it's not going our way or we don't have the greatest coach that season, maybe. We're going to stick it out. It's life. These are life Metaphors. lessons. Metaphors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's good socially, too. Oh, absolutely. You know, teamwork. Teamwork. Working together. Of course, some of the other sports uh, is individual as mm -hmm. far as golf. Right. Tennis, unless mm -hmm. you're in doubles. Right. But you really learn um, on a team to uh, cheer your teammate on. And I think that's something even in society that we're losing, right? We're, we're losing, it seems like we've desensitized um, about how you um, celebrate other people and help people along through seasons of their life. And I think a team, is, it's, that's empowering because you really are cheering your teammate on and it's helping the whole team. But when your teammate has a bad game, you, you know, you're girding them up. Mm -hmm. yeah. um. Let's move on to, this is a biggie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very aware of this. Video games. Yes. What an addiction, huh? Right. Woo. <laughs> I didn't grow up in that era. Right. So yeah. uh, we were outside a lot, yeah. whether we wanted to or not. But, you right. know, I, I like to be outside. I loved playing baseball, mm -hmm. basketball, and uh, riding my bike. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our society has changed a bit. Sure. You know, I mean, those video games are addicting. Yeah. I, how, how do we, uh, as parents, how, and not that there's one, you know, one and one only correct answer, right. but how do we kind of keep it within reason? Sure. You know, I, I have a 10 year old little boy <laughs> who loves to play those games. So we've had that struggle in our household, and we, stu we still do. We're working on it. I think that there's balance in everything. Um, I think we've l I've even lost a little bit of control in seasons in my home with my son uh, because I was like you. I grew up where we were outside all the time. And if you didn't have something to do, you made up something. You found something to do. Climb a tree. <laughs> you know, we did those kind of things, and now we have lost that. But I noticed with the kids that are playing, even my son, I mean, gosh, he just... He loves it. He has so much fun. He's become good at it. But yeah, it's tough to break him away. So I have learned that uh, as a parent, again, you have to take the reins because we create the addiction. These are children and it's on us that we're creating. And if we don't set a balance, mm -hmm. it's not always easy because it's a great time to put them on it if you have something to do. And we can get lost in that as parents too. And I think it's important to have boundaries, time limits, and be intentional about it. And part of being a parent is saying no. Is saying no. At times, you have to say no. Mm -hmm. You can't always be the good cop. Yeah. You can't always um, be their friend and just let sure. them do what they want. Sometimes they want to hear no. They do. I've you know, noticed. They want limits. Yeah, I agree. I've noticed with my own children, when I make the rules and I follow through, they do so much better. They feel secure. Uh, things can get crazy. Life's crazy for all of us at times. And, but when we stay focused and intentional with them, I, my kids, they love the security. Yeah, my simple rule has been if, with my son, mm -hmm. if, if he's doing well academically mm -hmm. and, he is in, and he was involved in sports yes. in high school, right. and as long as he was playing sports, uh, doing well academically, mm -hmm. then um, there was only so much time for him, you know, right. because the academic uh, uh, demands that he had were, were pretty high. Mm -hmm. So um, I just felt like, you know what, those grades are good, you know, give, give him that, that uh, time that he enjoys. Sure. Well, that's being, right, Kurt, being intentional about raising your child. See, some society too, I mean, there's the positive of life, and, but then there's the negative where we can let the, just allow these things to raise our children instead of us raising them. 
because life's gotten busy, we get hectic, we have work, we've got, we're single parents, or even if we're not single parents, we've got two working parents, and guess what? Things are raising our children than parents raising them. Which, okay, that, that brings up a good point. Mm -hmm. And we live in a most wonderful community we, here. We do. Uh, it's not Mayberry, <laughs> North Carolina, with, you know, Andy Griffith and Barney and Aunt B and little Opie, but, <laughs> w you know, let's face it, you know, we live in a very nice economical community, mm -hmm. this up and down the coast. Right. How do you teach your kids to value the dollar, mm -hmm. not just giving it to them, right. but value it to earn it, mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, appreciate the simple things in life rather than just giving them whatever they want regardless what it costs. Right. I, I, you know, I'm a firm believer in work ethic as, as the best gift you can give to anybody. So they should work for some things. And, you know, and in my home too, I raise these kids to serve. So when I drop my kids off to school, I've said it before, I, I love you guys. Remember, you're here to serve them be served. And if you take that attitude to do and serve, I think that that really instills some positive things of realizing that we're all in different places. You know, every child, and we have things around us, and we want all these things, but teaching children the difference between want and needs, because we can't have everything. Right. But it's easy to spoil our kids nowadays. I think, you know. So volunteering in the community is great. Absolutely. That really teaches yes. a lot of selflessness. Mm -hmm. And you, it's, it's not for show, it's not so everyone sees you're doing something out there in the community, but it's really right. giving your time. Sure. And to, maybe to people less fortunate, or maybe right. you're cleaning, you know, a, a, a street. Sometimes right. you see yeah. these uh, cleaning up the beach yes. in Santa Barbara. That's, that's, a, that's a great um, activity to get kids involved in. Yes, it makes a difference when you help other people. That instills so much in your children and even in us as adults, right? Serving and helping other people is so rewarding. It's so rewarding when we get outside ourselves. You appreciate things, you have gratitude, and then there becomes uh, self-respect. So then it's like what you were talking about. How do we just not give them everything? You know? So what, what, which brings me to the next point. Uh, how do you accept your kid when they do make mistakes and uh, they're not perfect? Mm -hmm. Are your kids perfect? No, they're not. <laughs> Unlike their mother. Huh? No, <laughs> far from perfect. So that's the beauty of life, acceptance and real being real. I'm really transparent with my children. We talk about hard things, you know, and it's, we're going to make mistakes. It's a great educational time. You know, when we make mistakes, is where we learn. And if we can take that perspective and instill that in our kids and in our own lives, that's where we learn and grow. It's not when we're on a mountaintop and when things are going great, they're going great, but growth really helps. Our growth is really when we're kind of in that crunch time where we made a poor choice or we made a mistake. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the perspective looking at it as a mistake too. It's just a learning thing learning time. And to counter that, I will say, sometimes we have to, if, if we recognize what we grew up in, mm -hmm. our parents without playing the victim card. That's right. Um, kids really need compliments. Mm -hmm. They need to be told, you know, when they're doing things good or, yeah. or even, not even if they're doing things good, just you, you really show that you love them when you compliment them. You sure. And you know what? The old school, you didn't hear that a whole lot, mm -mm. but that's something that we all love to hear. Right. Well, it's so important, right? I'm proud of you to tell your children you're proud of them. Some children never hear I love you. You know, I mean, it's, it's important that we're intentional about our words and that we articulate in that present moment and get in their faces. A lot of that's getting lost also. So, busyness. Yes, busyness. Everybody's so busy. Mm -hmm. And everybody's, you know, let's face it, we're, we're on our cell phones. Sure. We're on our computers. Mm -hmm. Well, electronics has... It's taking over. It's, it has. Yeah. The techie world, it's right. taking over. Yeah, it's, um, 
Well, if we allow it to steal away, like I was saying, raising our kids, it will. It does. It's just I think we have to, um, it's almost like when you say uh, don't work harder, work smarter. It's the same thing with raising children. Spending, it's not about spending length and lengths of time with our kids. It's about the quality of time that we spend some time with our children because we don't all of us have many hours in the day where we can be with them. But it's the quality of time where we're actually present and we are not distracted. And as adults and parents, it's putting away our electronics too and communicating with our children. We can be just as distracted with a phone, right? We could be on our phone checking our messages and we're not really present in the moment with our children either. So they're, they're learning that at the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I go old fashioned on you? Yes, go can, old fashioned. Can I go politically incorrect? Yes. Somewhere we have to teach them for the core faith, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna lecture everyone needs to go to church. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it works for many. Yes. Uh, but somehow we've got to, we've got to provide mm -hmm. um, some type of faith right. for our I, kids. Yes, well, I'm a firm believer. Everyone that knows me, I have a strong faith. So I know for me personally and for my children that, you know, you, we can fill our lives with things, um, but it will never fill the void if you don't get plugged in spiritually and have faith. Um, it's about a relationship. A lot of people shy away from religion. I do too. I'm not religious, but I have a relationship and faith has changed my life. It's what, how I overcome all of the trials and, that I have been through and that I'm still going through. But for my children, they have something. So when I was talking earlier about Tawny having her own convictions, I want my children, I want them, I have rules in my home, but also to instill in them that they have their own conviction so they have something to fall back on themselves and where are their value systems? Well, depression, we could do a whole show on that. Sure. That, that is a powerful negative energy that, sure. that, that is, has, sweeps throughout our uh -huh. society right. globally. Sure. And um, when you lose hope, you lose what hope. do you have? Right. You know, and that's rampant depressed. right now, right? That's rampant. And if you don't have a faith, you know, some, there's, there's a saying that said, there's more power in the faith than the proof. Wrap it up. Yeah. Okay, well, that ends our show, Game Changer, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.